Love you. Love Thank you. Too. you. Ah, we are so blessed. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, I love the space that that song put me in. Thank you to both of you. Beautiful. <sighs> Let's just take that in. That space. Right? Of gratitude. I'm going to start with a few affirmations this morning as I like to open up the service with. And we're both going to, we're all going to participate. So I want to do a couple affirmations of, in, in reference to gratitude, but not so much for things of the exterior world, but more of gratitude of our spiritual evolution, where we are right now. So it would sound something like this. I'm in gratitude for the presence that I am experiencing right now, experiencing right now, right? So I am in gratitude because I am more aware of my thoughts, right? Or I am in gratitude because I know that God has my back. Right? So that's where I want to come from. So I want a few from the audience this morning. I'm in gratitude because I have a choice. Yes. Thank you. I'm in gratitude because I can afford to I'm in gratitude for the abundance. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm in gratitude for life. I'm in gratitude for life. I'm in gratitude to have the choice. I'm in gratitude for the abundance that I am. I'm in gratitude for life. And the reason I'm doing this is feel the space that is being created when we are affirming these things. As he's sharing, as she, he has shared, she has shared, Beverly has shared, there's a space that's created in the presence of gratitude, right? Today's gonna be a different kind of talk. You know, I like to spin things around a bit, right? Talk title today is Gratitude for God's Gifts. It's inspired by one of my courses at Pathways of Light Ministerial School. It's a practitioner's course of where you bring the Course of Miracles into your practicing, everyday practicing. So I had an idea of what gratitude was all my life until I found this course. I was like, this is gratitude? And that's what I'll be sharing with you today. We're very familiar with, let's have an attitude of gratitude, right? I was like, what does that mean, you know? Let's have an attitude of gratitude. Or this positive affirmation of gratitude, right? So we relate gratitude to some sort of being positive in the world, right? And I'm here to share that gratitude is even more than that. It goes a lot deeper than we think. And to get into that space of gratitude, we must understand the difference of gratitude and what is its opposite. So that we can let go and we can experience truth. We can experience that gratitude because without revealing the darkness, we can't be free, right? So that's what we must do. So at this moment, I wanna share with you the two opposites. So the, the two differences. So gratitude, in, within the word gratitude, when you think about it, there's a freedom. There's an including, there's appreciation, there's a flow, right? Then the opposite of gratitude would be the opposite. It's rejection, it's excluding, it's pushing away. What happens is, is that unconsciously, we reject gratitude. We reject the gifts of God without even being aware of it. We reject those gifts. How do we reject it? You're probably sitting here and saying, I don't reject gratitude. I am perfect gratitude. You reject God's gifts, you're in rejection when you are judging. You're in rejection when you're not being forgiven, when you're not forgiving. 
You're in rejection when you're excluding. You're in rejection when you're separating. You're in rejection when you're making and, and even making the more the illusion real. You are rejecting. When you are stuck in the past and a grievance in the past, a grievance is something you hold in your mind that's not aligned to the love of God, something that supposedly somebody did to you, so you have a grievance, and you are rejecting the gifts of God at that moment when you are not letting go of that. So how can there be space of gratitude if you are in rejection? Right? So I want you to think now of that. How in your life you have rejected God's gifts of gratitude for you. What are God's gifts of gratitude? They are unity. Look at where we're at. Unity of Burbank. What a beautiful place to talk about this, right? Because that's what unity is all about. The oneness, the wholeness. That is what is the gifts of gratitude, that unity, that wholeness, that oneness. That is God's gift to us. What happens is, is that we have all this wholeness that God gives us, all this oneness, all this unity, all this love, abundance of love, and there's a part of us that rejects it. And I don't say that lightly. There's a part of us that shuts it down and doesn't want it because you feel guilty and you feel you don't appreciate it and you're not, you're, you don't deserve it. So hence you can't appreciate it. We must uncover that darkness. We must uncover those hurts. We must uncover that rejection what the Course would call lifting the veil of the illusions so we can experience God's gifts. I told you it's gonna be a little bit different today, right? I didn't even know what I was gonna talk about. Here we are. So what are you rejecting? You know, I feel, you know, through my whole spiritual journey, being honest about my grievances, being honest about how I reject God, how I reject God's gifts to me. It has taken me something to look at them and to work on that. It takes something. What I've come to realize is that I rather experience being authentic and raw and being honest with myself and my thoughts and bring up my grievances so I can heal them even though it's uncomfortable, even though it might hurt, I'd rather go through that and truly live instead of experience dying. Experience truly living. Because while I'm holding on to my grievances, while I'm rejecting God's gifts, what I'm doing is I'm living in a trance state, in an automatic pilot mode of not really living. So we need to clean house. Let's take the metaphor of our mind as a house and you have to clean it. You know, you get the broom and you start cleaning the house. The grievances, unforgiveness, the judgments. But you need to get that broom and you need to go under, under the counters. Start brooming away. All that that's under the refrigerator. Right? Under the crevices. You got to clean that out. You don't want to leave anything there because you don't want to live in a dirty house. Even if it appears to be clean. You don't want it to appear to be clean. Your mind, you want it to be clean. We must do the work. As being a child of God, it's our inheritance to have everything in unity and wholeness. That is our inheritance. It is our denying that 
and not feeling worthy of that, that keeps us miserable. That's what keeps us mis miserable, is not understanding that that inheritance, that that is what we are. So we must claim that and understand we're worthy of that. We're worthy of God's gifts of unity. We're worthy of God's wholeness because it's our divine right, because you're a perfect child of God. And again, I don't say that lightly. You are a perfect child of God. The only one that has forgotten that is you. And then we do what the Course would say, choose again. When you forget, you just choose again. When you forget, you just choose again. So I feel that what would be helpful so we can understand gratitude to a whole new level is to start to get real with yourself on how you have rejected God's gifts of gratitude for you. Because when we're rejecting it, you can't be in gratitude. And what happens is, is that when you're not aligned to, to God's gifts of gratitude for you, you're not experiencing your true self. Your true self in the essence of God, your true spirit. Of course, we'd say our mind is divided between the ego and Holy Spirit. That connection of spirit, that connection of Holy Spirit is our true self. And every time we're rejecting, we're rejecting our true essence, our true self. We're here to live and bathe and sing and dwell in that true selfness. You want, when you show up at home to your family every day, you want to be in your true self. When you go to work every day, you want to be in your true self. When you are alone in the, at home and you're alone with your thoughts, you want to be in your true self. Because that is what God wants for you. He wants you to be in your true self because within your true self, you know that you are one in Christ and Christ is within you and you are one whole in unity and you're accepting the gifts God has given you. And then guess what? You do the happy dance. <laughs> right? Do the happy dance. Chiki, 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 chiki. Right? That's what I'm going to do today at the Spanish service while we're celebrating four years. Right? You will experience happiness when you no longer reject God's gifts for you. I have a story for you that I didn't share last Sunday I was here, last time, because I had forgotten, and I shared it in the Spanish service, but I didn't share it here. But I, it goes very good with attitude of gratitude. As um, Christine, I think, had shared on, on, on February that I had gotten a book deal. And the whole process of getting the book deal was such ease and grace. It was so easy for me, it was. It was like, I don't know, buying a piece of gum, I have no idea. It was just like very, very organic, it was very beautiful. It was in such a space of, of gratitude, of essence of oneness and unity that really nothing could go wrong because I'm in that space. But that space comes from me because I am the creator of that space, right? So. When I was approached by D. Patrick Miller to, to, write, to write a book, I kind of denied the idea because, you know, I, I didn't feel that I was an author. You know, I, have, I grew up with dyslexia. I grew up with a very short attention span. Like, if I'm reading a book, I'm on the top, I can't wait to finish a chapter. You know, like I'm on the top and I'm already like trying to get to the bottom. Um, <clears throat> I didn't consider myself a writer. You know, I'm not good with grammar. I mean, I could go on and on. But then the symbols were so obvious and the doors were so open. That's something that we need to see, that there's symbols everywhere and God is like saying, you know, hello, and, and then it was obvious. Okay, okay, I got it. I gotta I got write this book. All right, I got it. So I, we began to do a book proposal and Patrick had done this book proposal specifically for, for, for a very big publisher. And because he felt that I was 
a Hay House writer. He felt that hey, I would go perfect in Hay House because of the look and everything marketing wise, it would be perfect. So I said, okay, fine. So we decided we we're gonna write a self-help book. And I would implement all these um, exercises and teachings that I have in this book. So we do the book proposal and we submit it. And through the process, since I don't consider myself an author and this is not such a big deal, that's kind of how I took it. I was like, okay. You know, I didn't have any expectations. There wasn't like this needs to happen or this needs to be the person that needs to publish my book. I was more like, all right, let's play. Let's have fun. Let's be in unity. Let's be in wholeness. Let's just, let's just have fun with this, right? So Patrick submitted it to Hay House and we had heard a couple weeks later, he called me that, that they, had, they, they weren't interested. And at that moment, I was in such gratitude. I was in such gratitude. I was, and not that I was grateful because that I had got denied, but more in grateful that I didn't have any attachments. So grateful that I am accepting God's gifts of gratitude because I, right now, no matter what's going on in the external world, I am in unity and wholeness, that I'm not broken, that that doesn't define me. That book doesn't define me. That publisher doesn't define me. The, even the book doesn't define me. God does. So what happens? Let's move on. I want the book to be where it's gonna flourish. I want the book to be where it's supposed to be. Why would I want to feed it to somebody that doesn't want it? Doesn't make sense, right? It's more the allowing process. First week of January, it gets submitted to a couple more publishers, like a handful of publishers. Then a week after that, we got a couple more, we got some offers. We got some offers. And then eventually it's been picked up by New World Library, which is a beautiful house, a beautiful, amazing publisher that also publishes Deepak Chopra's books and publishes Decker Tolle, The Power of Now. So look at, look at that. So in that unity and wholeness, of experiencing the ease and grace of the gifts of God of gratitude, things unfold just perfectly. And there's no need to do anything, there's no need to manipulate, there's no need to make happen. I tell people that things being easy is normal. I, I wrote a video, I actually did a video on my book, I put, I. I, I, just, um, I just got a book deal and it was, it was very easy. <laughs> That's what I put. I got a book deal and it's, it was very easy. Easy is normal. We've been taught the opposite. That there's need to be some sort of struggle and strife. That we need to go against the current. And then that's the way it's supposed to be. God's gift of gratitude for you is ease and grace. And when you are not, not allowing, you are not being trusting. How do we trust? Is by going back to our internal teacher, Holy Spirit. And with Holy Spirit and Jesus, as Unity would say, you grab the hand of the Holy Spirit and Jesus at the same time and you walk together in gratitude. As you ask Holy Spirit to change your perceptions, Jesus, love, light, whatever word re resonates with you, to help you heal those grievances, help you heal those rejections, which are barriers, so that you can experience that, what I experienced through that business deal of a book, that essence of freedom, that essence of joy, that no matter the outcome, no matter what it looks like, I am free. And we are worthy of that. We're worthy of that with our relationships with those around us. We're worthy of that in our job places. We're worthy of that all the time. And in conclusion, that's what I want to get to. 
we don't feel worthy of God's gift of gratitude. And we must begin to understand that worthiness, that we are worthy of God's gratitude, that we are worthy of God's unity and wholeness. And we are once and for all going to let go of the rejections of rejecting God's gift. So I want you to think about now how you're going to do that. You lift your brother up. You bless your brother. You hold your brother in high regard. As you're grateful for your brother and sister, you're grateful for, for God's gifts of gratitude. When I see Christine in truth, I remember my truth. As I see the power in Barbara, I see the power in me. As I see my brother in judgment, I see myself as judgment. The only way you're gonna experience God's gifts of gratitude is having the willingness to see it everywhere because God's gift of gratitude is wholeness. So since it's wholeness, we need to be in that wholeness and celebrate our brothers and sisters and rise up together and do this together as one. Collaboration. Let's join in the fun. Let's join in receiving God's gifts of gratitude together because we are worthy of that. We are worthy of that. So let's bring that in. Let's bring that in. All right, let's pray. so grateful for God's gifts we're grateful for the willingness to receive these gifts we're grateful to God for its love and for always holding us in high regard no matter what We're grateful as we open our hearts this morning to understanding the truth, to understanding that we are worthy of God's gifts. And we open our hearts to the gift of God, which is unity, understanding that, wholeness. We're open to perfect health and abundance. We're open to choosing the Holy Spirit in our lives to guide us. And we reject. We reject what no longer serves as we lay it all down now and come into the arms of God and lay in the arms of God. At this time in this space, we send love to Lydia, our dear congregate that passed a few weeks ago. As we send her love and light, as we recognize she's not a body, that she's pure sweet spirit, and very much alive. We love you, Lydia. We love you all. We love you, God. We are one. May God's will be done. All together. Amen. Thank you.